You might think the story of an Italian plumber and his eerily identical brother attempting to save a princess from a fire-breathing tortoise quite insane. Well, if you still do, where the hell you been, bruh? Everyone knows Mario. He's the man with the golden plunger, after all. There was a time when he claimed more influence than the iconic Mickey Mouse. Not surprising when they even share the same tailor. In basic, he's an Italian skirt-chasing plumber with a jumping fetish. The red overalls and initial emblazoned cap have become shorthand for the word Nintendo, and he's one of the industry's biggest players, even after two decades. One of few people who get away with releasing endless crappy sports titles and milky side games, except for those rascals at Electronic Arts, of course. He'd gained his big break while dueling with an ape, but this carpenter had much, much more to do after his fiasco at the building site. After taking a bit part as a child-catching villain, he was joined by his brother, who had bought into and become joint owner of his plumbing business. Cleaning these pipes would introduce some of the signatures that would go through into the real Mario series. Turtles, pipes, fireballs, you know, all that jazz. Nonetheless, in 1985, Japan and the United States received a sequel they wouldn't necessarily expect. Europe and Australia would have to wait until 1987 for their adventure through the Marioverse. This game proved a massive gameplay shift for the series, but we'll get into that later. Not only has this grown to be the greatest selling Mario title in the series, but the best selling video game of all time, cementing Shigeru Miyamoto and by proxy Nintendo in early as a powerful imaginative force. It spawned numerous mimics and essentially created the platform genre, truly a landmark. And all this from the company that Coleco had scoffed at, thinking they couldn't compete when they refused to be ripped off and declared they'd make their own games console. Who are Coleco again? Oh yeah, they died before the 80s closed. The game was an early example of a proper side-scrolling platform game, and one of the first to really do it right. Mario is guided through the Mushroom Kingdom in order to save its kidnapped princess, Peach, or Toadstool as she was known then. Most of your time will probably be spent airborne while under Jumpman's influence. In fact, jumping is your only option without a power-up, as the first button on the old grey rectangle is used only to make Mario dash. To be honest, you'll probably never let go of it once you've gotten your bearings. Mario and Luigi can each take a hit before tumbling from the screen, so you must take care in your travels. Luckily, obtaining a mushroom will increase your size and allow you to become Super Mario. In this state, you're able to smash overhead blocks entirely as opposed to simply bouncing them, as the brothers did in Mario Brothers to flip the opponents. While Mario's main form of attack is to jump on an opponent's head, he can also flip a Koopa and kick them, which is again, a Mario Brothers arcade reference, to obliterate enemies on the ground ahead but beware as the spinning shell will also hurt you. He can also swallow a fire flower, which only appears when he breaks a block that would have contained a super mushroom when already in super form, allowing him to upgrade further and launch fireballs that bounce for a while before fading out, taking out any enemy in the way. If a flower is used when he's normal, he would only become super, unlike later games. Starman appears sometimes, and will make Mario invincible to anything but falling from the stage or running out of time, the effect lasts 18 precious seconds of There are also green variants of the mushroom, which grant an extra life, and many, many coins to collect. 100 also awards a 1-up. Bowser! Or Koopa! is a villain of the piece. He's the king of the Koopa, a race of tortoise-like creatures. Something that his mother fed him must have been awesome because he grew to an unusual size and installed an absolute monarchy. Obviously, every king needs a queen, and due to the rather ambiguous nature and small size of the Koopa, he has to look elsewhere. He was drawn to the Mushroom Kingdom, a land famed for its hallucinogenic properties, and its landscape that forces one to believe that blocks can fly, and just about everything has eyes. Probably all those mushrooms and flowers they eat. All this thanks to Miracle Grow. Soon after arriving, he discovered the princess and decided to forcefully take her home. On his way, he sends his minions into her kingdom to prevent any rescue attempts. Mostly mushrooms converted to the dark side named Goomba, and the previously mentioned Koopa Trooper. This unusual diplomatic strategy doesn't cause an outright war like one would assume. Rather, it drags two strangely involved plumbers into the fight of their lives, or rather, the jump. The level design was wonderful. 
especially considering the train wrecks that some of its contemporaries offered. Some very fiendish platforming to be had for all. The kind where the same section can kill you again and again and again. And made all the better for having unusually tight controls. Mario responds well to your direction, his jumps falling precisely under your spell. The only downside is his lack of traction while running, which can often cause you to topple from a ledge when not paying it the total attention it demanded. There are also many secret areas hidden away. Sometimes Mario will be able to travel down into pipes or smash through a wall into a new area. It was a game of its time, though. Therefore, it was geared completely and unflinchingly towards the killing of you. This is most apparent in the castle stages, where you required the reflexes of a cat and the look of the Irish to dodge the flames and hammers that get in your way. Luckily, each stage has a checkpoint, too. So when you inevitably ran into something bad, you wouldn't have to begin from the start of a level if you progressed far enough. Unless you were in a castle. You had to run the gauntlet and beat the Bowser manifestation completely without dying. And the real bad news? Run out of lives and you are out of here. There are no continues, my friend. Those ever-loved aquatic levels are also included. This would provide the template for most platformers after all. However, strangely, unlike his rival Alex Kidd, being underwater did not rob the Italian stallion of his firepower. Yes, you could go against physics and shoot fire through the water with the same bouncy aerodynamics as you normally would. Mario also flaunts his ability to selectively breathe. He cannot drown here. Try that in wet dry world if you dare. Mario seemingly has the weight of a brick, which means you'd have to pump the jump button repeatedly to keep swimming. The various enemies throughout tended to be similar. There are only a few sprites used. Most are dispatched by jumping on their head. However, others require the Fire Flower or the Star Man to defeat. Some can't be killed by anything at all, like Chains of Flames. Once you've beaten the game, you have the option to play again in hard mode. It is a bit of a cop-out, because the levels are the same. While your score will not carry across, all the enemies here will be faster and harder to dispatch. Goomba are replaced by the more sturdy Buzzy Beetles, for instance. Of course, there's also those infernal Hammer Brothers. Believe me, Mario will get that ass, so fuck Luigi. These were the days before Luigi got the shaft and ceased to receive equal billing. So the brothers are out in full force. There was no direct option to play as Luigi as in later games, and no real reason to beyond a slightly different colour palette. Their abilities would not be fiddled with until the Japanese sequel released elsewhere as The Lost Levels. Luigi was simply a sprite for the second player to use, just as he had been in the previous game. The two player mode was not simultaneous and required that players take it in turns to direct their favourite brother through the game's 64 stages, or just walk to World 8-1, like everyone else. Obviously, as an early game for Nintendo system, which was hardly the most attractive console visually, Super Mario Bros. is simple and blocky in presentation. It still manages to look better than a lot of its NES peers, and that's the only way it can be judged in retrospect. One major complaint is that Mario and Luigi are identical sprites, and that the visual variety overall is lacking, with a severe limit on available objects to construct levels with. Nighttime meant that the backdrop turned solid black, for instance, without any shading of the characters. The series sprites on the system would evolve to look a lot better in time, though. Re-released as the first title on the All-Stars cartridge, along with the other NES Mario games, the Nintendo's second home console, the Super NES, with a lovely graphical overhaul to make it look more like Super Mario World. The format's launched plumber-based game. It's also available and modified on Wii's Virtual Console and in the cripplingly overpriced NES Classic series of Game Boy Advance cartridges. The deluxe version on the Game Boy Color didn't alter the graphics much, but did add extra features like a map screen and included the lost levels as an unlockable bonus. It's also in Smash Bros. Brawl as one of those crappy time demos. It may be short, simple and oh so exploitable by the likes of speedrunning communities, but even today this dinosaur of a video game is completely playable with only slight issues. Which is good, because some games of the time feel pretty much unplayable these days. It isn't as refined as Super Mario World, no. But it established many of the series' clichés, and even, one could argue, clichés of the entire platform genre. It isn't the greatest Mario game, but it's really up there. The hills may not have their happy faces digitally drawn on them yet, but the player sure as hell does. Do the Mario! Swing your arms from side to side! Come on, it's time to go! Do the Mario! Take one step, and then again, let's do the Mario! All together now! Come on now, just like that! <laughs> 